A jammed gun ultimately saved the lives of several people, including deputies in Baraboo. Authorities say 18-year-old Kenneth Soulsby Funmaker broke into two homes in Sauk County late Saturday. He reportedly pulled the trigger several times, but his gun only fired once. When sheriff's officials caught up with him, he pointed his gun at a deputy, pulled the trigger. It did not fire. A canine was deployed and he was taken into custody early Sunday morning. No word on why Soulsby Funmaker's gun misfired or if anyone was hurt. The state assembly is expected to vote on a bill today that would overhaul the state's civil service system. It would make it easier to hire and fire state workers. Some 30,000 state workers would be affected. Governor Scott Walker says he supports this bill. Democrats and unions say it's an attack on workers. The assembly will also vote on a bill that would allow all students between grades 3 and 12 to opt out of standardized tests required by state or federal law. Right now, students in 4th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grades can opt out of tests required under state law. Now, under the bill, schools would have to excuse any student in grades 3 through 12 who want to opt out of any test required by state or federal law. Schools wouldn't be penalized on accountability reports for students who don't take the tests. Making news now around the world, investigators are trying to determine what caused that whale-watching boat with 27 people on board to capsize off Vancouver Island over the weekend. Five people were killed, one still missing. NBC's Miguel Amagur reports now from Tofino, Canada. Surrounded by majestic beauty, this morning, the nightmare aboard the Leviathan 2 runs deep. Towed into calmer waters, it's the chaos on this vessel many will never forget. They're just laying around the boat lifeless. Ken Lucas says he was the first to arrive at the sinking ship. The fisherman plucking 13 people out of the frigid 50-degree water. Everyone, he says, was in shock, most suffering from hypothermia. 21 aboard the popular whale watch tour were rescued. Five lives lost in these waters. Later today, divers will resume the search for the one passenger still missing. The owner of Jamie's whaling station spoke out about the tragedy on his boat, but didn't address any possible cause for the accident. I'm absolutely amazed at the, um, the support we've, we've uh, experienced in the last 24 hours. We're all traumatized. With investigators poring over boat maintenance records, interviewing passengers and crew, they'll also focus on conditions. A choppy sea mariners say can quickly turn violent. And investigators say they will continue that search for the missing as investigators also continue their search for answers. Now back to you. In our decision 2016 coverage now for the first time in months, a national poll shows Donald Trump not leading the Republican presidential race. A CBS News New York Times poll found 26% of GOP primary voters would support Ben Carson for the nomination, compared, as you see there, to 22% for Trump. The retired brain surgeon has seen his stock rise in recent weeks at the expense of Trump. Three other polls show Carson leading Trump in the key early state of Iowa. General Motors is recalling nearly one and a half million vehicles that can leak oil and catch fire for the third time. That's because repairs from the first two recalls didn't work. Here's a list of those affected models. GM says more than 1,300 cars have caught fire since being fixed by dealers and customers have reported at least 19 minor injuries. In the previous recalls in 2008 and 9, GM told owners to park the cars outside until repairs could be made. Drenching rain from what's left of Hurricane Patricia is taking aim at new targets today after hammering the south for several days. NBC's Janet Chamlin has more from Pensacola Beach, Florida. Finally, some blue sky in the south, but until this point, this has been the storm that just wouldn't quit. No let up this morning to the heavy rain, pounding wind and floods brutalizing the Gulf Coast. From Pascagoula to Pensacola, red flag warnings, the wind and rain unrelenting. The rain is punishing, but more than that, it's the wind. 
gusts exceeding 35 miles an hour, the type of winds you would see in a tropical storm. Across the south, dramatic scenes as the storm moved through. Part of the causeway to Dauphin Island, Alabama had to be shut down, water streaming over the seawall. I looked out from the uh, balcony and saw it out here, and I'm like, whoa, that's getting a little closer to comfort. In Baton Rouge, rescuers pulled 20 elementary school children to safety when their bus stalled on a flooded road. The storm now moved on from New Orleans, but not the misery of flooded streets, debris, and damaged homes. Real bad. I mean bad. Every time you get yourself situated, it's another disaster come through. But through it all, even a little humor. But if you're coming into Mobile, you should be okay, except for the gusts of wind and the blinding rain. Other than that, everything's great. And while the coast may be clearing, now this storm pushes into the Midwest and Northeast. Janet Shamley and NBC News, Pensacola Beach, Florida.